What up, y'all? It is Monday. Time for another Monday motivation, motivation chat. chat. Hey. How's everybody doing? How's everybody week going so far? Hope we all had a great Monday. I know where we're at. It was a little rainy, rainy, cloudy, cold. Yeah. Weekend was really nice though. Yes. I hope everyone got outside at least for a little bit over the weekend. I know we did. I did with the kids. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just so nice to reconnect with nature. I think that's what misses out in when it gets cold outside. Um, and that moment to just reconnect like was just so nice, so rejuvenating, and it kind of like helped reset from the busyness, the not the constant to dos and busy, yeah. crazy schedules. Definitely. Um, recap from last week: we had the awesome Katie Fox, who is the beautiful mind behind Groovy Foodie, a, a food blog, um, and we made um, chocolate. Reese's Cups with her mm -hmm. um, and that was fun so Monday Motivation Check Kitchen Series we're thinking we'll make it a thing maybe monthly or something like that yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so definitely stay tuned with that definitely. yes um, and so we're looking forward to seeing her grow um, an eventual cookbook and she's looking to open a cafe um, so head over to Groovy Foodie check her out she has some awesome recipes um, she outlines in the caption of her amazing photos um, how to do the recipe the ingredient is so easily um, like the out the the format of it all is just so easy yeah, you don't even have to follow, leave Instagram yeah. which is kind of like mm -hmm. her drive behind creating Groovy Foodie is to make it easily accessible yep. This week we have the amazing Juliana Featherman and her awesome brother Michael. We're going to chat about their journey, um, the launch of their awesome app, Making Authentic Friendships, and we cannot wait to hear their story. So let's go ahead and bring them in now. Hi. Hi, beautiful. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. How's your Monday going? It's good. I usually don't look like this, but I actually had an allergic reaction tonight, so I'm a little like, oh, no. you know, so excuse my appearance. You look amazing, but you also always look super fabulous. I'm always seeing your clothes. I'm like, she, I love your style. It's so different. It's so unique. Thank you. Yes, I pride myself on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, will your brother still be joining us today? I'm going to try to pop into him at the end, but I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how he's feeling. Yeah. Awesome. So... Let's just jump right into it and just kind of uh, talk about um, what autism means to you and, and just life with an awesome brother. Yeah, so obviously autism means so much to me. My brother, Michael, is two years younger than me, and he has autism and ADHD, and he inspired my initiative. And yeah, it's obviously shaped my whole life growing up with him as a brother and it's shaped our family so much uh my parents and I are very close due to the circumstances and um, you know we're more like a team than like a daughter and parents we make all the decisions together so it definitely makes our family dynamic very unique um I love it obviously like I said it makes us very close and I wouldn't want it any other way but of course it comes with a lot of challenges and Growing up, um, you know, his needs have changed from over the years. Obviously, they continue to change, but um, mm -hmm. each year brings a different challenge. And, you know, it's hard, and we definitely have a lot of hard days. And that just makes us stronger at the end of the day, though. And it definitely, like, brings our bond closer together as well. Um, and mm -hmm. I just am very passionate about helping him and individuals like him. Um, and I love what I do. And... Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> where was the moment where the idea for the app kind of just like 
the light bulb moment for creating the app? How did that come about? Yeah, so I was actually a junior in college at the time, which was almost five years ago now, which is insane. Um, and I was the president of the autism club there, and I loved it. It was a lot of work, but never felt like it. And I was just planning like walks and fundraisers, raising awareness on campus. And I just loved it so much. Um, and I'm like, I'm so good at this. Like, I should do this in the real world, because at the time, I really didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. So I started thinking through like ways I could create a business to help my brother and individuals like him. And one of the first things that came to mind was the fact that he's really lonely and obviously struggles with making friends and social skills and whatnot. And I know from growing up around a lot of individuals with autism and special needs that that's a common trend, you know, the lack of social skills, the loneliness, the feelings of isolation, that's all you know, kind of comes with the territory in so many cases. Uh, yeah. So at that moment, I thought of it. And <laughs> from then on out, I knew that's what I wanted to do. And I just started, you know, doing it <laughs> pretty much. And I had no idea what I was getting myself into, but just throw myself into it. And five years later, here I am. Nice, nice. So how did you begin the process of, um, like, you, so that was kind of like the beginning, um, but when the, the ideal came in regards to an application, um, that's definitely, you know, something that's big these days, are uh, applications. Um, what were, like, some of your first steps, you know? How did it become like, all right, well, let's create this app and um, and then going from there? Yeah, so from the very start, I wanted to do an app because I knew that that's obviously the most sustainable path considering the world we live in and everything is just, you know, so technological. And um, if you want something to be still a thing 10, 20 years down the line, you want to go tech, you know. Uh, so to me, especially as a millennial, that was a no brainer going the app route. And I knew that not only would I be able to kind of connect my brother to individuals near us that would be the easiest way to kind of get my reach much further um than just where i am which is in new york and long island i knew that using an app would really be the easiest way to extend that reach um but again i was very naive had no idea what i was getting myself into thought i could literally make an app with like my life savings <laughs> which at the time was like nothing and yeah, I mean, I had no idea, like none. And I started writing a business plan, building the social media, doing all that. And I was already like a year into it when I actually started getting like quotes for development. And they were quoting me, you know, 200 to, to 200 to $250,000. And I was a senior in college at the time. Obviously, that was like an unfathomable amount of money. Uh so that was really overwhelming. And at that point, I was like, oh, my God, like, I'm never going to be able to do this. But, you know, if there's a will, there's a way. And I kind of just kept growing and learning about different ways to fundraise and raise money and, you know, all about the business world. And now five years later, literally today, we just launched the Android version of the app. And a few weeks ago, we launched the iOS version. So yeah. it's insane. <laughs> How does that feel? You know, I have a lot of feelings. Of course, I'm thrilled and it's like so exciting that I've worked so hard for this. But, you know, it's come with a lot of stress, you know, and I've been very, you know, I've been like more upset than happy just because like I obviously want it to run smoothly and I want everyone to be happy. And unfortunately, no matter what, that's never the case. And of course, I have people already, you know, saying, oh, why doesn't it have this or that or everything like that. So I'm kind of like you know, upset about that, but it comes with the territory, you know? Yeah. I mean, with all apps, there's a way to provide suggestions, right? Because you can't think of, of every user's yeah. perspective of, of the app. And so is there a way for people to submit like suggestions on how it can improve? Yeah. So of course, as most apps do, or in general, mm -hmm. most businesses do, we have an, a, 
place where you can leave a review. Sorry, I'm literally on Benadryl right now for my allergic reaction. So I'm like, ah, but um, <laughs> there's a place where you can leave a review and then tell us about what it is you like, don't like, etc. But even easier than that, people could reach out to me directly. I mean, if you message me on making authentic friendships account, that's like the easiest way to reach me. And I'm on it, like all the time. So the odds of me answering on there right away are very high. Um, and that's how I get most of my feedback to this day. People reach out to me directly, say, oh, we love this. We don't like this. Here's a suggestion, things like that. And to date, we've taken a ton of user suggestions because obviously I know a lot about my brother and the population, but there's things you don't think of. And throughout the process of getting users to use it, we've had a lot of people bring up good suggestions. So we've definitely been taking that user feedback, uh, throughout the last year and trying to make it better. Mm -hmm. um, I know from what I do know about the app, it's connecting people in the autism community together, right? To, to be, be create those friendships, but are parents involved? Like, especially yes. if I'm thinking of younger kids, right? That don't have mobile devices yet. Right. Um, so first off, it's actually not just autism. I speak obviously so much about it because that's what I know and live, but, um, it is for any intellectual or physical special need. So we serve, um, individuals with autism is the majority, but we do serve down syndrome, CP, spinal bifida, hearing impairment, sight impairment, epilepsy, um, and others. We cover, I believe, like 14 or 16 different diagnoses now, and that number could just grow because people, we have an other category, so people can continue to kind of add new diagnoses. Um, and sorry, what was the other part of the question? Our parent, is there a parent community um, right. to bring people together for younger kids who don't have mobile devices? Yeah, so that actually just changed. So parents or caregivers have always been able to make accounts for themselves, but also for their child or sibling or whatever it may be, um, mm -hmm. for two reasons. One, if they're under the age of what it, they can be, or two, some individuals might not be capable of using the application on their own for whatever reason. Um, so for those two reasons, a parent or caregiver can use it on their behalf. So initially, mm -hmm. we had it ages 13 and up to be able to make their own profile uh, due to child protective laws. But since we launched on iOS, uh, they kind of have very strict privacy settings and whatnot. So it's changed to 17. So now technically, mm -hmm. you have to be 17 or older to make your own account as an individual. And if you're under 17, then a parent or caregiver has to kind of oversee that. And really okay. what that means is... Um, you know, like a, a parent has to have their email on there. That way they can get notified type thing. It's like a permission thing. Uh, so again, that parent or caregiver doesn't have to be like doing the direct interacting per se, but they do have to kind of like sign off on it and, you know, say that they're monitoring whatever's going on. Mm -hmm. Someone asked, when is it coming to Google Play? So I guess that's the Android. Yeah, um, that just came out today. So Android got literally approved this morning, and it has been live on Google Play for like 10 hours now. Oh my gosh, I didn't see that. So I'm going to download it as soon as we're done. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I know from like just watching your stories, iOS had a lot of hiccups recently. Um, how do you handle challenges? Um. So... Well, yeah, obviously with tech, like technology in general, there's so many things that can go wrong, whether it's internet connection or literally so many things that could go wrong, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. So just kind of dealing with those hiccups has been a lot. Um, again, I try to connect with my users directly. So people message me and say, oh, I'm having trouble logging in or, oh, this site is... It used to be web-based, so they would say, like, the site, but now it's the app. But people will reach out to me and say, oh, my login's not working, or, oh, you know, it's lagging, or whatever the case is that it's happening. And then I kind of can either walk them through it myself if I know the answer or talk to my developers 
and say, listen, this user reported that this is a problem. What's going on with that? Um, and then they kind of tell me, like, oh, it could be this, it could be that. Tell them to try this. And if the problem is, you know, they can't figure it out with me walking them through it, then we can actually, like, look at it from the back end. And we pretty much do that. That's the good part about being still kind of small. Um, you know, we can kind of serve those users on an individual basis versus, like, you know, these big companies that don't have the luxury of doing so. So that's definitely a perk. Um, but it's challenging, you know, because obviously people, and especially right now with it launching and everyone joining, my head is spinning <laughs> trying to um, deal with all those requests. But, you know, again, part of the territory. Yeah. I had like a, a, a question. Like a, a question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. So we are really about finding balance in life and, and wellness. And um, we were wondering how does wellness and, and staying healthy, how is that? brought up or talked about in the communities that you serve like, or you serve? Yes, yeah, so that's a really interesting question. Um, I mean, obviously part of the matching we do between individuals is based on their interests and kind of like the lifestyles they live. So definitely that's something people could be matching on. If someone likes to work out or go to the gym, things like that, uh, that could be a criteria that people are matching on. Um, but as and personally, like on the Instagram and whatnot, I'll post about things like that. But right now in the actual application, there's not too much implemented. Um, mm. But, you know, that could be something for the future because we're really big, especially now that we've have the apps is we want to add a lot of features around building life skills. So not only letting these individuals, you know, connect with other people, but also making sure that their experience on the app is them using learning things that they could use in their lives every day. Uh, so we've implemented right now conversation. Um, so there's two types of questions. So every day that you log in, you get a multiple choice question, and it's either about internet safety or social skills. So it's like multiple choice, and then it helps them learn how to make and keep conversation for one or um, learn how to safely use the app as well as other apps on the internet, you know, around not giving out your personal information and um, things like that. Because obviously the naive, this population could be very naive in some cases. So we want to make sure that we're really drilling, you know, certain things around being safe and whatnot. So yeah, going forward, we want to add even more kind of life skills building type things. So that could definitely be something. I've seen uh, a couple of interviews that you've had with your brother and he's like very loving. He, he, he like cares about you so much and he seems so very, very supportive. Um, has there any, has he been um, in regards to the app, creating the app and kind of going this direction um, supportive immediately or was there some sort of restraint? Because I know um, like I have a nephew who's autistic, like he's like nonverbal autistic. So therefore, um, sometimes there's they're resistant on things right because they're they're afraid or they don't want you know like i don't know if i want to deal with all that um so how has he been during this entire process well that's kind of how he's been from the start i mean i think it's a little bit of obviously these individuals have kind of certain ways certain things they use they like their routine um and my brother definitely is like that as well so i think part of it is that that he was like a little nervous about it but also the fact that I made it as his sister um you know it's like kind of weird for him he I think he feels like oh well my sister made this you know um even though it's literally for him but anyway uh so in the beginning he was very hesitant to even like talk about it and yeah that has been that pretty much went on for the like the beginning of it but now as time has gone on and We've done so many interviews and really he's warmed up to it a lot. And I think it's for both reasons, you know, and it's really nice because in the beginning, like we would have camera crews and stuff come and that was new and uncomfortable for him. 
but then now he's like almost like it's normal to him which is great for his social skills and his self-esteem because now he can get in front of a camera and talk about things and it's kind of like natural to him so i mean in every aspect i think it's been great for his growth for sure mm -hmm. that's awesome. yeah uh, tom it's Thank like you. he uh, it again saying that he uh he's having some tech issues currently um but yeah and that's not the first person who said that today and i'm already looking into that um <laughs> Because someone else said this similar, said that it said the same thing about their email. So I actually already contacted my developers about that. So I will be in touch once I hear back. Gotcha. Sound good, Tom? <laughs> um, life is kind of like hindsight is twenty twenty, And when you go through challenges, it sucks. And you, you do your best to persevere through. Um, but you never know, like, the life lessons that you need through those challenges until you've gotten to the other side. So in this five-year journey, what was the challenge that you are now grateful for? Oh, there's been so many. Um, and obviously, in the moment, mm -hmm. all of them feel like the end of the world. Yes. Um, I mean, that's like anything in life, obviously. When you're going through it, it just feels like so severe. And then you look back on it and you're like, oh, my God. Um, so I feel like everything I've gone through has been like that. But I don't know. I talk a lot about a time where I had a pivot pretty much. So when I was already like a year into the concept of it and I already started putting like a lot of work into it, I um, – something else similar came out and I signed my brother up for it and obviously checked it out. And I ended up deciding that I didn't love their platform because it was very wordy and whatnot. So I wanted to gamify mine. And that's kind of how the avatar builder coin earning game aspect of making authentic friendships came about. And at the time I was like crying, like so upset, like, Oh my God, I just did all this work. And now someone came out with it before me pretty much. Mm -hmm. And then that ended up having to make me pivot and it ended up making me gamify it. And that gamify aspect is one of my favorite aspects of it. And I'm so happy with, you know, that decision. And I feel like that decision I wouldn't have even made if it wasn't for this roadblock that came my way mm. early on. So it's just interesting because, you know, at the time I was so upset and thought it was this huge roadblock, but it turned out being a blessing. Um, and I think that's true for so many things in life and in business. Um, I've come across a lot of roadblocks with the app and with certain things. And, you know, it ends up being at the end of the day for the best, you know, and you have to believe that. Definitely. For I mean, sure. I feel like there's a lot of people that kind of get deterred from their passions or their dreams because of that. You know, I feel like there's so many individuals in this world it's like somebody's gonna have the same idea somebody's gonna have something, something. similar you mm -hmm. know so it just just because somebody has something similar doesn't mean to stop you know like how many you look at nike you look at reebok you look at adidas you're like look at like all yeah. these different brands it's just like they're all basically kind of like the same thing but different you know like so don't stop you know there's always something something about it that can be different that's awesome that you have this connection platform and you're able to implement um, that game aspect to it and that's like that's appealing you know it's just like oh right. you know that's that's really that's really dope um so i mean it's so funny you that you bring that, that up because i just said that the other day in an interview or not even an interview i was speaking to someone personally about them stop wanting to start a business of their own um and they're like oh this is my idea but i know that there's already like 10 apps that exist that are similar to this and i was like yeah, but, like, think about, like, Uber and Lyft. Like, Uber came first, and Uber's huge. But then, I, I don't even know. That might not be true, but I think that's true. But anyway, then Lyft came along and tried to kind of go up against Uber or whatever happened, and people thought they were crazy because why would they do that, you know? And right. then now Lyft is pretty big, too. So it's just, like, it goes to show that even if there is already, you know, competition, that you still might be someone's favorite, you know what I mean? Right. You could just do it different in your own way. Everybody likes right. ice cream, but everybody has their own flavor. Exactly. <laughs> it's about, you know, doing it better than someone else, too. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, we had somebody that commented, Tiffany said that she's looking to connect with friends who use sign language. Is that a, um, an option on the application? Yes. So I actually talked to Tiffany personally numerous times um, about this. But yes, we do serve individuals with um, hearing and sight impairment. And currently, the video and audio chats aren't completed on the actual apps yet, but they are going to be deployed in the next update um so those will be great tools for those individuals and you know like i said you're going to be connected on age diagnosis interests and location so you can then be connected with individuals with the same diagnosis and hopefully you know that can mean that it's someone that uses sign language it is geo located as well like yes it is um but it's not specific to your actual location we just take your okay. zip code um and then your location is just randomized within your zip code got okay. it this is so um, cool. I need to download it yeah it's so exciting i don't know what michael's doing michael can you say hi real quick he's literally sleeping oh, oh he's don't wake him up. Him <laughs> michael can you say hi real quick what? just say hi say hi to my friends He's like, nah. Well, here he is making a, an appearance. <laughs> you are such a sister. <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> such a big sister, I can't. <laughs> I didn't know if he was sleeping or not, but apparently he is. You didn't believe him. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of your next steps um what do you what are you kind of striving to reach next hi um it's like so weird because obviously the app's been like the end goal for so long and now that i have the apps i'm like oh my god <laughs> like now what but yeah obviously keep building our user base um when we launched the actual apps we had 3100 users on the web app in 50 states and 45 countries so obviously we hope to convert you know a decent amount of those over to the app and definitely expand more so hopefully get to all the countries and um add more features to the app like i said more life life skills building features and maybe even expand into other populations uh, i'm not sure and yeah, I mean, my main goal is obviously just helping people. So if I can continue to help people, whether it's a small amount or a large amount, then, you know, I'm completing my goal and I'm happy with that. But, you know, I try not to look too far ahead and take it a little at a time because otherwise it gets super overwhelming. Yes, definitely. Yeah. definitely. Um, we have that conversation often about um, there's always, like, wanting to do all of these things, and when you're thinking about it all, you're just like, oh my god, it almost feels I'm not doing terrible. anything, forget it. I don't, it. I don't, <laughs> I don't know it. the next step and anything, so you gotta like kind of break it apart and really just focus on the little steps and work through Right, and it's and definitely just, like a personal thing. Like for me, yeah. like I get overwhelmed if I do that. Um, and especially from the beginning to now, like my dad, like I, the first day I started this, I'm like, well, I need this much money, I need an app, I need this, I need that. And my dad's like, Juliana, like, you're on step one right now, and that's in step 30. Like, you need to take one at a time. Um, and he still uses that. Like, today I was upset about something, some feedback we got, and he's like, Juliana, you know, you just have to get through step 29, you know, and you will get yeah. to step 30. Um, so, yeah, it's different for everyone. Some people can look at the big picture and not get overwhelmed. I can't. So, yeah, try to take it day by day, not stress too much about the numbers and stuff because I'm doing everything I can, you know, and – it'll come because with the web app it did and it'll just continue to you know yeah imagine like when, when did the the web app uh launch uh last summer so it's been like a year and four months so since a year the months, web, yeah, web apps been launched. users that's insane you know yeah that's amazing. um yeah. so i feel like Definitely, uh, kind of going back on the question about like what are the next steps. Um, you kind of have 
a, that's kind of going to be preoccupied for you because when dealing with an application, it's not just kind of like, oh, I made an app and that's that. Like, it's, yeah, it's growing. Create new versions, updates, you know, and just kind of like as tech is evolving and changing and, and, and making everything available to newer devices, how does the screen scale? And, you know, like you're making sure that everything's lined up in the right position and everything. And I'm a developer, so I know, like, it's... <laughs> it's super fun. So definitely um just this just looking at some of the applications that we use regularly, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, even like YouTube, that they all yeah. kind of like have their own thing, but they're constantly evolving, constantly changing. Um right. so this is this is amazing. This is great. Yeah. Thank you. I so mean, of, um, do you know I uh, the meetup? It's like meetup.com. Yes. Like I'm envisioning at some point in your application, there's some level of that of like, uh, you know, after COVID isn't so crazy and scary, um, where people are utilizing the app to create like in-person meetups and events. Yeah, that's exactly the goal. Uh, so when the business plan was wrote in the beginning of all this, that was the goal. The goal was actually have these individuals meeting in person um, ideally at a place in their community, but obviously almost the whole time we've been launched, even on the web version, it's been in Corona. Uh, so obviously that hasn't been the case, but we do ask what, when you sign up, things you would like to do in the community with a friend. So that could be bowling, mini golf, restaurant, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. and then if like both users say they like bowling, then we would then help them find like a bowling alley near them. So those things are all built in. You know, nice. they're going to be, like, tools to use, but obviously not right now because yeah. we're not encouraging in-person meetups mm -hmm. right now. But, yeah, that's going to be really important, too, for building life skills, like getting these individuals kind of having somewhere to go outside their house, um, getting out into the community, you know, being around people. That's just so important. Like, my brother wouldn't leave his bed if he, you know, had the choice. And that's obviously not good for his social skills or mental health or anything like that. So I think that's going to be very crucial. How do you, how does your family help to keep your brother kind of healthy and, and active? Uh, so, I mean, he actually does a work program. So, I mean, pre-corona times, he was going there five days a week. And nice. even there, they do like yoga and, you know, exercise type things. Um, but since Corona has been, he's been doing that on Zoom. Uh, he's been doing his work program through Zoom. So I think just today he did an exercise class on there. My mom was telling me. Um, so yeah, he pretty much does like life skill stuff all day over Zoom every day. So that's really great for him. And we're so fortunate to have that. But unfortunately, a lot of individuals aren't fortunate to have a program like that. Um, they're really hard to find. So we're very lucky. And obviously, I mean, I'm actually even planning with a grad program um, that specializes in special needs. We're planning like a Zoom exercise night, uh, like a Zoom game night in the new year. So we'll be extending mm -hmm. that to our users as well, which will be nice. That's, so it'll be like a virtual thing happening on the app? Yeah. Uh, so pretty much it, like the push notification will go out on the app to let individuals know that it's happening. And obviously I'll post on social. And then what's nice about the Zoom is obviously people from anywhere can ultimately do it. Um, so yeah, definitely has its pros and cons. Because if it wasn't Corona, we would probably be, probably be doing it in person. Um, but then only individuals who are local would be able to do it. So, you know, like I said, there's definitely good and bad parts of it, but yeah, it's crazy. It's almost like a gift and a curse, um, because definitely yeah. if your, your overall, um, seems like goal and thought process, it is a worldwide thing, but with the in-person stuff, like you can only kind of plan locally, right? Like you can plan yeah. to things that you're in connection with. Um, so with it being um, this pandemic, it has forced even more the remote aspects. So therefore reaching more people 
has been uh, possible, but I know it has also been challenging as well. Right. I mean, it's actually a really good time for the industry I'm in because a lot of these individuals are out of their work programs, are out of school. Um, so we doubled our database during Corona time due to that fact because people really needed something. Uh, so, you know, I'm in a good industry for what's going on. Of course, it's still not good what's going on and none of us want it, obviously. But, um, you know, it does have some silver linings and that's definitely one of them for us, for sure. Right, because the need for that online interaction right now, once the world can be together, then those same people that are already logged on online can begin to right. meet in person. So, yeah, that's definitely a silver lining. Yeah, but right. social, social interaction at this point is difficult for anybody, let right. alone um, people with special needs. So um, right. it, is, it is a perfect time for that. It's so crazy. Like, just going to the grocery store is just weird. <laughs> and we're tech, back. We're just talking negatively about tech issues. <laughs> <laughs> Round three. <laughs> well, it gave me time to think about my answer. Um, so pretty much, you asked me what I would say to anyone about killing the day and I would just say that you can do anything you put your mind to and it sounds so cliche but it's true like so many people give up on their dreams real fast because they think they can never achieve it or they're not smart enough rich enough connected enough um don't have enough resources etc cetera, etc cetera. but it, it's so easy to come up with those excuses but it's the harder thing to do is actually follow through with your dreams and actually try to achieve them. And yes, it's hard, but think about how good you're going to feel at the end of the day when you know you did that. Cause that's pretty much what I did. I just like gave it my best shot, put everything on the line to try to do something I was passionate about. And I knew that it was a good thing. Um, and I'm lucky cause obviously it caught on, but the reason why people fail is cause they don't like try that hard a lot of times. And that's like truly how I feel. Um, so it's scary, but you can do it. If you are passionate about it and think it's a good thing, then it's probably a good thing and you should do it. Yeah, go ahead and invest and take that leap forward and yes. pursue. Follow, the leap's pursue. the hardest part. Yeah. You know? Falling's easy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and pretty much once you're falling, like, this happened to me. Like, I was already falling, and I realized how hard it was going to be, but I was already, like, knee-deep in it and committed to do, you know. So at that point, I had to find a way. But that's kind of good, because sometimes when you're forced to find a way to do something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh, we got a question. question. Um, so do you have any regrets as far as making your movement move? Mm. Um... No, I don't really believe in regrets in general. I mean, again, cliche, but it's true. Like, obviously, I've had a lot of hardships throughout my whole journey. Um, uh, and all of it has brought me to this point. So I don't necessarily have any regrets about any of it because all of the hardships, all of the tears, all of that has made me stronger and brought me to different solutions. And, you know, it truly wouldn't be what it is today without that. And that's the case for everyone who starts initiatives and does things like this. Um, so I personally don't believe you should have regrets. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't do anything differently. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure if you could have any regrets of pursuing something you feel like so so true in your heart right mm -hmm. like so passionate about is it like if you try and you fail but at least at least you try yeah i feel like that would, that would be where the regret would come in if you didn't try um <clears throat> but yeah because you never know yeah. never know it's 100 percent true because if i would have just let this idea go five years ago and didn't actually try to do it because i was too scared then I would definitely have regrets because then I would always wonder, like, what if I tried to pursue that, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I'd rather have, you know, a little bit of a hardship going through it than have regrets about what I could have done differently, you know? Yeah, for sure. 
We're so excited to yeah. see how everything goes. We're definitely going to be downloading the app and seeing all the updates happen. Yeah, I'll definitely be reaching out to my sister and sending it to her as well so she can get my nephew on it, mm -hmm. um, get situated with that. I'll yeah, we have some cool. a friend in Florida who's also autistic as well. Yeah. Um, I, w I think I would love to connect you two because she's actually a personal trainer. She is all on the autism spectrum herself, and um, she's it, her she really wants to um, get people in her community that are also on the spectrum to understand that it's important to be healthy and exercise. Um, and so maybe she could maybe join some events or give you ideas on the best way to do that because she is living yeah. right she's she's a living breathing example of what it means to be on the spectrum and still find um the importance of exercise <laughs> yeah, yeah that easy. sounds like it'd be a great collaboration yeah definitely awesome thank you so much for just taking this time out of your exactly. evening yeah. despite being on benadryl yes, yes. go get yeah, some rest can you see me like trying to stay awake <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be sleeping in three minutes. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to meet with us. It has been an absolute pleasure. Inspiration. We will definitely be staying in touch. For sure. Everyone, if you missed it, catch the replay on the first video and catch us next Monday for Monday Motivation Chat at 9 p.m. We'll be chatting with Mike, who is the founder and CEO of King's Kitchen. We're so excited to just continue these conversations to share people's stories and keep you motivated. Have a great night. Thanks for having me. Remember, kill the day every day. day.